Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Radio, etc. Um, interesting job today. Got a Sparrow Legacy here. Lovely day, by the way, apart from the fact that our hills are on fire. Like our local Port Hills, there's big bushfires happening at the moment. Okay, so this is a 2004, I think, Legacy sedan. Doing a stereo into this. So this, this here is a, you know, like the big trapezium shape sort of deal with the heater below and it's a Macintosh version. So there's a amplifier under this seat, which I have to bypass. And the stereo is going in here, but I'll show you how in a minute. By the way, if you, I hope you enjoyed the barbecue video or videos, whatever I choose to do. Um, that's actually happening right now at the exact same time in a break while Grant is cutting those holes out, I'm working on this. Hopefully I get this done nice and quickly and I can get back to working on the barbecue. And I'm also out of GoPro battery, I can see. So yeah, I'm gonna take this inside and show you what I'm doing. So the reason he's changing his stereo is because there's no sound coming out of this one. As you can see, turn like the volume up to max, there's just nothing, and that's on a radio station. Uh, I think either the, I think possibly the amplifier output must have died or something like that. But anyway, I'm gonna bypass that amp, connect straight to the factory speakers with the new stereo, which hopefully hasn't got Hopefully the tweeters are capped and not act, find that out when we do it. If it does turn out that way, I might have to reschedule because it'll be a bigger job. But anyway, let me show you how I'm putting the head unit in because this hole here isn't like a standard DIN or anything like that. It's a funny Macintosh extended long thingamajig and there's all these buttons down below. So a while ago, I went to a wrecker in search of parts for one of these, trying to figure out ways we could possibly put new stereos in these cars because these cars are verging on 10 years plus old and we are aware of the fact that the stereo is sometimes soon going to start dying. So I went to a wrecker and got a stereo for a Legacy and this is what I came back with. It's like the exact same thing, conveniently for him it's the exact same thing because it's going to look good, except I have butchered it. I have, you know, like taken all the guts out and like, you know, cut holes and siliconed it and everything like that. I've absolutely munted the thing. but. What I, but what I've done is I've made it possible to put a single DIN stereo in here. We've had this kit in stock for a while now, I've been you know, wanting to sell it to someone. Only thing I don't know is if this heater works. Let's actually check his heater. Worst case scenario, if this heater doesn't work, we know like then I can use his heater. If this heater doesn't work, I'll use his, that's not a problem. But yeah, basically I'm gonna be putting a single DIN stereo in this slot here, putting this in there, and then part of the deal is that he gives us this whole unit and I turned that into another one of these to sell on to the next customer. It's just really convenient as well because it's gonna look good, being the fact that his is already a Macintosh one, so it's going to look pretty uh, standard and factory. If you're wondering why I don't just cut the hole out of this one now, um, it takes a while to make this. I don't, I don't have the time for that today, so I'm doing this one and then I'm gonna use that for the next one, for the next customer. So that's what I need to crack into. Um, I'll get the head unit mounted first and show you what it's gonna look like and then crack onto the wiring and amp bypass and we should be good. No steering wheel controls to worry about. It's gonna be a pretty simple installation. We're just going for a basic radio, a Pioneer MVH X395BT, which is a mechless stereo that has Bluetooth, USB auxiliary and radio. Pretty simple. So that's what today's job for me is. Well, it's not gonna be a whole day's job, but you know what I mean? If you're wondering timeline of when this is all happening, it's at the same time as this whole barbecue ordeal. Uh, we've got these two speakers mounted, the unit's mounted, the amplifier's mounted, so basically it's just that Grant's about to cut the third to last hole with a giant hole saw. Still got that whole side to do. This one just needs one more hole cut out of it and then the speakers go in and it's done. But back to the legacy. Let's uh, get the stereo out that we need. Ooh, last one. Last one. I wonder if this one has the, uh... ooh, it's got the factory Macintosh sub. Oh, that's good. Where's the button? Doesn't have a button. Okay, one of these legacies that you have to do it from the key. There we go. No CD changer. No, but there is a factory Macintosh subwoofer. So, I'm just gonna use his boot as a little place to sort of lay some stuff out, since I've got limited boot bench space at the moment. I'm gonna try and do it over here, but as you can see, there's a whole lot of shit on my bench. Just stuff everywhere. First thing I need to do, since these 395s are shallow chassis, they come with a little add-on bracket for when you bracket mount it. Now, this, and with the uh, trim on as well, should just slot into here, I think. Or does it go the other way? No, it looks like I made it to go the other way. Okay, so we have this off. I might take the faceplate off for its own protection. 
this cable tie here is intentionally tight so that it stays straight. Okay, get that lined up in there, relatively speaking. I know this works because I have had an Alpine one in it before when I originally built this thing. It's just a really tight fit, up a wee bit. There we go, now we're getting somewhere. And that does just fit through there. And then what I do is I get the little trim thing. And once that's clicked on, slot backwards a wee bit. Like that. Now that's in the position I'm gonna want, I want it to be. So I can get my Phillips, which I've left all of them next door. So you can see I've had to obviously drill new holes in the sides here for like the new uh, stereo mount. This is all back when I, you know, built it. Bit of work goes into it. Tighten that one up there. So this whole face is a wee bit curved so it doesn't sit dead flat, but it sits pretty good. Okay, now the face plate. There we go, and that's what it's gonna look like. This will all work. None of the, these are all locked into position. They don't even push down anymore. Has the light button works. The CD slot is empty. Don't put anything through there. All the buttons are, I've hot glued all the buttons to solid state so you can't push them in. I think what I'm gonna do now is take out some of the factory gear and see if that heater works because that's gonna affect whether or not I use it or not. So I've taken too many of these apart to remember. And very easy, just put the gear back down into like drive or neutral or something where it's out of the way. Pop up this chrome trim ring, like that. Best way to do it is sit it under there. Comes out of the front. Unplug the eco switch and unplug the cigarette lighter. There we go. Two screws down at the bottom of these silver bits. There we go. Once you get it past that lip, it's pretty easy. There we go. Comes out backwards. Like that. Now there's six screws holding this whole thing in. Now, this whole thing just lifts out like that. Unplug the hazard light switch. And then we've got the aerial, which we can unplug down here, I think. Like that. Unplug the main power harness for the stereo, the ground whatever that wire does. And then this big fat one here is what goes to the Macintosh amp. Oh, that's the heater unplug. The Macintosh one, you have to reach sort of down here. There we go. See, it's a big fat plug with heaps of pins in there. I did once try and uh, decode all of those pins to figure out what they were and see if it was possible to tap into them. But after like hours, I honestly had no luck and figured out that we couldn't, couldn't tap a signal into it, no matter what I did. It must be data, that poorly installed band expander. Why do people just wrap the, like, twist it and tape it? That's so, such poor installation. Nobody cares about quality of installation these days. It's, oh, we'll just twist and tape. Twist and tape, that's all it needs. Right, what I'm wanting to know now is if I plug in this heater, does it go? Just plug that in. And also the hazard light switch would be good to test. On ignition. Yep, the heater. Seems to work. Fan all the way up. In, out, AC on, off, mode. Internal demist, rear demist, auto. Temperature all the way down to 18, all the way up to 32. Dimmer, dimmer works. Sweet, that all works. Has lights? Yep, they work. Cool, all good. We can proceed. Uh, so two very interesting uh, things I just noticed. I looked under the driver's seat for the amp, and, I, and there's no amp. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought maybe it was hidden in the boot or something, something I hadn't seen before. But no, it's under this seat, the passenger's one. And it's told Grant, and neither of us have ever seen the Macintosh amplifier under the passenger seat, or on the left-hand side of the car. I wonder, oh no, it is a Japanese import, it's definitely a Japanese. Um, yeah, just weird, don't know. And then I looked at the wiring for the amp, it's unplugged, so, that probably is why he's got no sound coming out of his stereo. Yeah, it helps to have your amp, amp plugged in. I don't know how it got unplugged. It's 
got a plug just like um, this factory, this Subaru head unit one, and it has got a clip so it doesn't just like fall out. So someone must have unplugged it. And I mean, I'm still going to do the job, obviously, because th this was more than you know just about getting sound for him. It's giving him Bluetooth and USB and things like that. So there's still purpose in doing the job, even though I figured out why there's no sound. So I'm going to, I think, should I rock the seat back? Or do I not need to? Yeah, no, I think I will rock the seat back. Make, uh, tipping the seat backwards off its uh, bolts just makes it a lot easier to work on the cables. And I'm pretty sure these Subaru ones are always just passive with capacitors on the tweeters, which is good, so I don't have to worry about doing any capacitors. So yeah, I'm gonna tip the seat back and I'll get down to the wiring and show you guys what wiring you need to get at or what wires do what. It's very simple. Okay guys, so I've gotten pretty much every panel off that I'm going to need to have off. I've um, undone all the bolts that hold the seat in and just rocked it back. The reason I don't take it out fully is because there are wires connected and this does have an SRS airbag label on it somewhere I'm pretty sure. Well it will do. So I'm not unplugging the seat because that will cause an airbag fault. Down here what you see is the amp. Now this is normally on the driver's side. We, I honestly, like I say, don't know why it is on the passenger side here, but it is. And I figured out why it's not going. It's not plugged in. Yeah. As you can see, it's very similar to the main stereo plug up here, but not quite the same. It's a wee bit longer. But um, yeah, so this is where I'm gonna get my wires for my speakers. And I think I might actually take the amplifier out. I usually do when I do a bypass, if it's easy, just to get the weight out of the car. Uh, so yeah, I've taken off obviously this floor um, trim, the kick panel, the side panel, and the A pillar here. And the reason I took that off is so I can do the microphone, which I think I might do now just to get that out of the way, and then I'll move on to the wiring and show you guys how I do it. So I'm just gonna rock this back down here, like that, lean the seat back. Oh, let me get the microphone. Sit on here, okay. Lean the seat back just a wee bit, so I'm not, oh, hunched over. Now careful when you lean back. It's so hot in here. Okay, just get this microphone done really quickly. This doesn't have a factory microphone spot, so we use the old uh, Pioneer clip. And spin the hat around backwards like a gangster, like an OG. Okay, oh, there you go. You just lift that lip back. I like the Sabaris for doing microphones because they have a nice plastic lip on the front of their headlining. Most cars, the, like the sort of cardboardy carpet stuff, it just ends. But Subaru put a nice plastic lip on it, which is good. And then we just sort of get our microphone wire. Just use our fingers to tuck it behind that lip. It doesn't go anywhere. A lot of people say you need to use cable ties or something to hold it up here. But in the five years I've been doing it, I've never had anyone come back for having the uh, microphone cable come down. The chances of that falling out of there are slim to fuck all. Just move that to the center, angle the microphone a wee bit. And now over in the A pillar here, even down here, you'd like, you can get away without cable tying it. What I like to do is uh, just sort of go all the way down and under that clip there and under this clip. And then all I do is I sort of tuck it behind these yellow things so that just the pressure of them pushing the cable against the metal is enough to hold it in place. Do you know what I mean? So you just tuck it behind enough so that it's in between the plastic and the metal and then the plastic pushes on it and holds it there. You don't need to cable tie it. There you go, you should be able to see it. So it's not behind this piece, it's behind the vertical against the metal and it's all good. And then we can jut this down here and out of this hole here. What I can do now is put the uh, big A pillar back on. Oh, didn't realize you guys were sitting on that. Just slots in there and then... Done. Okay, now for the microphone. This sort of thing here is why I stopped doing, you know, cashies in my driveway, like, um, you know, jobs for my friends and stuff, because it's little tools, like this piece of long plastic that you don't realize you need, that are very helpful, you know? Like, you can have a toolbox, but there's all these resources and things that you can have at a workshop that you just can't have at home, and metal ones of these are very helpful as well. So, this is a nice, just sort of long piece of plastic. I don't know what you would even call it, just a long piece of tubular plastic. And it's, I don't even know where we got it from, but it's just super helpful. Because what you do is you attach a wire or something to it, and then you can thread it through, and it's nice and sort of rigid, but also flexible, and not sharp, so you can't damage anything. So 
So now what I do, I kind of look through here and I just thread this all the way over top of the glove box, reaching from the other side and, and voila. That's how you get the microphone wire in behind something that you can't remove. So now I'm pretty much onto the wiring stage. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do real quick is uh, take the amp out. It's just a 10mm socket, very easy to get out these amps. Down at each end there is a little 10mm nut. In fact, I think they're even made of plastic as well. So they're very simply held in. A few times, let's have a look. Yep, plastic nut at this end. There's another one. And I don't have to unplug it because it's already been unplugged. There we go. And the amp should just de-slot. Oh wait, there is one more thing I have to unplug and that's the input side. There we go. So the two plugs are at the end here. There's the main plug that I showed you, which looks like a regular Subaru plug, and then this DIN plug that you saw up the other end. So yeah, these two plugs here, unplug them. So now, that DIN plug, you don't need that. You can stuff it back inside or you can chop it off, whatever you want to do. You can just leave it. Now this one here is what's got your speakers in it. Now, you're going to be careful though because it's also got power in it. So if I'm going from left to right here, what we have at the very end, we have two blacks. That's, but those are both ground. And at the other end, we have two thick sort of red black ones, red mainly, but with black stripe. Those are both permanent power supply. And then there's no turn on wire because that's done with the data from the head unit. But then all the other ones are speaker wires, except for the thick blue and white ones which go to the factory subwoofer. So now I can't remember exactly which speakers are where, so I can test this and tell you. But if I start at the ground end, the next two in, which are white and orange, are the back left. And then we've got white and light green, which are the back right. The next two are the thick white and blues, which are the subwoofer. Should be able to make that go. Yep, subwoofer. All the way across to the other side now, we've got white and pink, front left. And then we've got white and purple by the look of it, which will be front right. Yep, there we go. And then after that, you've got the two positive ones. So hopefully, if you guys are trying to do this by wiring, uh, trying to figure out what wires are what, hopefully you've written down what I've just said. If you're looking at the back of the plug like this, I'll bring you guys a bit closer, because I know this is a fisheye lens. If you're looking at the back of the plug like this, it goes grounds, rear left, rear right, subwoofer, and then there's a big gap, and then you've got front left, front right, and then two positive wires. So what I'm gonna do is get out my cutters and start cutting away some of this tape so I can work on it. Go just cut off about like two inches maybe, not even that, of that insulation stuff so I can get to the wires. And I think, and if it wasn't already obvious guys, with the speaker wires and that, all the white ones are the negative side of the speaker if you're after polarity. They're at the bottom of the plug, so that's a good indicator. And also they're all the same color, which is another good indicator. So yeah, we got orange and white, green and white, thick blue and thick white, which is the subwoofer, pink and white, and then purple and white. The power wires I'm just gonna leave there, but I can cut all the other wires except for the subwoofer. Since our stereo isn't going to be powering, so I usually cut them off around about an inch and a half back from the plug, snip, because that's a good amount to leave in case you want to reconnect it. Um, and also enough that you can work on it, like solder new wires to it and that, 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 and now we need to go a bit further away for these. There we go. So those, the rest of those can all just be left, and now we've got here our eight wires for our speakers. Unfortunately now they are different lengths because these wires aren't all the same length going to the plug. So what I can do, I really should have cut these ones further back. Oh well, too late now. So now, Push that out of the way. Strip off about a match head of insulation with your side cutters or your wire strippers. Just like that. And now we've got our eight wire tips exposed. I'm gonna bring you guys closer because I keep forgetting that this is a fish eye lens and that you can't see that much unless you're like really close up. Okay, so there's our eight wires, which I need to recheck because I keep forgetting. I think this one will be, so orange should be back left. Yep, green will be back right. Pink is front left and purple is front right. Yep, 
And that, so now all I need to do is get some wires, attach them onto those wires that I've cut now, run them up to the head unit and attach them to the head unit. And that's essentially what an amplifier bypass is. It's pretty simple, as long as you know where the amp is and what wires do what. It gets trickier as you do things like BMW X5s, that's definitely one of the hardest. Now, what we use for our wire, I wonder if I've got any spare stuff. I need at least, I wonder if that would be long enough. Yeah, I need about a metre of eight cables. We just use this five core trailer cable and two lengths of that covers it easily. I've got about a metre and 80 centimetres here. And I'm gonna connect them on to those wires down there. So, helps to uh, just tape them up in a few spots so that they're loomed together. I only wanna cut through the outer insulation here, not the inner insulation. Okay. So now, I don't use the green wire in either of them. So I just cut that off. And we've got red, red, brown, yellow, and white on each one. Uh, pair. So what we do is we do pretty much Toyota colors. Um, in Toyotas, their back speaker wire colors are red, white, yellow, and black. We just substitute brown for black, and we use those colors to pretty much power to do any speakers where we're installing this cable, just because it's easy to remember. So we've got red and white as a pair, yellow and brown as a pair on both of them. And the easy way to remember is that the dark colours are the positives and the light colours are the negatives. So red and brown are positives and white and yellow are negatives. Now to solder these to all the wires down there and to figure out what wires are what, all I have to do is use that battery again, pop test them because they'll be soldered and working and then I can connect the speaker wires of the head unit to the other end of this cable. Oh and the other thing I didn't explain before earlier with these wires is that we remember the red and white is on the right. Very simple and easy to remember because it rhymes. Red and white is on the right, which means brown and yellow is on the left. So red and white is the right channel, brown and yellow is the left channel. White and yellow being the negatives, red and brown being the positives. Very simple and easy. Okay, so. Turn all these wires up as well. Now, I remember that orange and white and green and white were the back ones. So, now they are the longer ones, so I need the shorter length. Of the Orange white was on the left, which means I need brown and yellow. And white is the negative, so white goes to yellow and orange goes to brown. Okay, and then green and white. Green is the positive, which goes to red, and white goes to white. Remember, purple was on the right. So purple goes to red, and white goes to white. Sometimes it gets hard to sort of these things together if the wires are short, but that's okay. And then we've got the last two wires. White goes to yellow because it's negative and pink goes to brown. Okay, there we go, they're all tinned up. Now I just need to wrap them all in tape individually. If you are ever thinking of doing this yourself, please use solder. Like chocolate blocks, those things designed for houses, those don't work in cars. They vibrate and the wires, the cars vibrate and the wires come out of them and cause shorts and damage product. Please don't use chocolate blocks and please don't just twist and tape. It's just not strong enough, you need to use solder. Please use solder if you can, and if you can't, have it done professionally. Okay, so now that, that those are all taped up, I can re-loom these. Now you see why I de-loomed it, because I had these wires at different lengths. Whereas now, they are the same length. Now because I've got these at different length, I can probably just look at them now and figure out which, ones are the, which one is the rear speakers and which one is the front speakers. So I know that the orange and the green are the rear speakers. If I follow that one, along I know that okay so I know that the short one is the rear speakers and the long one is the front speakers now when I've run that up the front I'll know exactly what wires are what and I won't have to test it so now what I need to magically do without you guys slipping away is get these wires up to this hole here if I start sort of pulling back the carpet and then also you have to on these lift up this rubber trim because there's a big bit of plastic here like that I can lift it up and I'm going to take my watch off because otherwise I often scratch it. So now I get this end and I sort of thread it through the hole which these wires are coming out of. You guys probably can't see it because it's right down below you but I'm just threading the trailer cable that I've just attached back through the hole that uh, all, this, all these wires are coming out of. And in fact there's actually, I don't know if you guys can see, right, right here there is a bulge in the carpet for where the uh, for where the Macintosh like 
DIN plug comes through. So that's a really good spot to run this these wires because it's not going to make any extra bulges. So if I just follow that and then I lift this up and get my hand under and I can pull it through. And then I sort of, at this point, I think I might, is the DIN cable secured or is it just? Sometimes you can get the DIN cable all the way out because there's no need for it to be, no it is cable tied all the way along, okay we'll leave it. Okay so now that plug sort of just, I'm just going to tuck that plug back in on itself under and behind there, right, it's out of the way and the same with the DIN plug that can just loop under there and go off into that corner there where it's out of the way. So that's that whole end of it done under the seat. So now if I lift the carpet back up again a wee bit, there's my speaker wires all there, I need to get them to come out of that hole so I'm going to jump across here and follow with the uh, there's a heated duct under here and I'm gonna okay so back where we were before the uh, memory card ran out of battery uh, ran out of room so folding the carpet back here I've got the speaker wires which are just coming straight across there across to the right to the side there sometimes it's easier to take as pull back as much of this carpet as you can but you can only get so far before because this plastic definitely sort of makes it hard under that heater duct with the DIN cable I'm so pro I use a GoPro I don't I shouldn't even need to use a GoPro I'm already pro okay there we go and now now that that's under there I can lift this side up again and run it of course you can go the long way if you want if you've got enough cable you can go all the way around the outside to make it easier Two trailer park girls go round the outside round the outside round the outside it does make it a wee bit harder though and so now I've got it to this point here where it's following up with the DIN cable and I just pop it through here and grab them there like that and there we go there's my speaker wires ran and I'll just make sure that they are taking the shortest possible route because I want to get as much cable as I can up there yep feels like they are okay so that's as short as it's going to get okay, so now I can put this carpet back down and re-tuck all this stuff back up under the panelling that I pulled down pop this side piece back down there there we go now we're in bang this uh, rubber trim back down rubber seal but there and then sideways like that I need a couple of these things I took off goes there goes there position and pop the three pops in one two three that's supposed to be over the kick panel so I should have put that in first that's back in now I can put back on this long trim which goes to this end on first and then and then finally this piece here cool we're all back together so now I can lean the seat down I'm not going to bolt it in yet it's always good to do that sort of thing last okay we're all back together I'm sitting in the car feeling hot and we got our speaker wires here these ones are a wee bit shorter than I'd like but it's okay I can work with short so what ones were front and back? Because, I guys, I, I can't remember what ones were front and back. So I'm just going to have to test them again. Okay, now I can chop the green ones off because remember we don't need the green. And I always have to be careful when I'm doing this because I'm colorblind as fuck. And sometimes I get green and brown mixed up. Why am I an electrician you ask? Because my parents told me I could be anything I wanted to be. And what I said I wanted to be was not an electrician but this is what I'm doing. Fuck, that's the green. I always have to be like triple sure that it's the green. The green and the brown in this in this trailer cable is very similar. Well to me it is. Once someone points out the green, then I can always see the difference. It's where it's a mental thing. Okay, strip these wires. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the other wires I'm gonna need in this plug are thick black, which is ground, blue red which is permanent yellow red which is accessory and then we've got illumination and aerial but i'm going to have to check which ones they are because i can't remember off the top i'm pretty sure yellow black is illumination and blue is accessory i'm not sure what this black white one is i don't know where that goes to but pretty much all of those wires got myself a uh whoa we're not bolted in got myself a uh Hook up lead here just for reference, just so I know I get the right wires, even though I've got a pretty good idea. Okay, so no, blue 
is illumination and yellow black is the aerial and that black white one doesn't get used but I can at least chop them all the same length and I know which ones are what obviously since one of them is live the permanent I want to make sure that that is isolated and not touching anything I'm just going to go the same length as this one as this accessory one here which has already been stripped a wee bit so now I can get my soldering iron and the loom for the stereo and start wiring them up again the way I know what wires are what, or at least most of them what wires are what, it's just from experience guys, it's not just a guess or a universal colour or anything like that. Every vehicle or every make of vehicle has different colours for what wires do what. Well, I just have done lots of cars so I know what is what. So yeah, it's just from experience. So don't take my wire colours that I shout out and assume that they're correct or use them in different vehicles. And even if you're in a Subaru, just check properly with a multimeter and everything like that before you go wiring it up to your new stereo because it, it, I've seen it before, cars can be different. Which is why, after I've installed this, uh, wired up this loom, I'm going to test everything at the head unit end to make sure everything is correct. Because last thing you want to be doing is putting power in the wrong end of your stereo. Because it won't last very long. The amount of people who wire especially in Toyotas because they've already got like a lot of those sort of universal colors in their loom especially in Toyotas people always wire up their stereos like the uh, the universal colorway color for color and man I've seen some stereos die in those things some stereos go to die they think oh there's a yellow that will be permanent power no that yellow is rear speaker wire dummy here we go everything's tinned up I also just realized that I'm not going to be using the illumination wire because the Pioneer stereos don't have an illumination input so I don't need that anymore what I do need is my tape who was texting me I tape up both of these wires together actually but just not touching just like that and now before I do the permanent one I definitely want to tape up accessory and ground there we go cool so that's like the powers all wired up and now I can do the speaker wires and because I forgot what lengths were what now I just have to do a quick test Cool, that's all the wiring done, I just need to tape it all up. All wired up, so now I just need to do that quick test to make sure everything is all right. Rear right. Yes, front right. Yes, front left. Yes, rear left. Yes, okay, so the speakers are all good. Did I grab my test lamp or did I? Of course, it's good just to check your powers and make sure everything is running the right way. Positive. Okay, yes, so that's permanent. Accessory should turn on and off with the key. Yes, there we go. Off. Cool. And that's pretty much everything we need to know. So now what I can do is loom up the stereo loom and the microphone, put a aerial adapter on, and go from there. Okay, so now I can actually get the unit and put it in. Okay, this is it. Plug in the heater. Check. Plug in the head unit. Check microphone check that thing didn't get used that thing isn't going to get used so they can get just taped up and I've just realized now that I've forgotten to get that aerial adapter I just mentioned okay here's my aerial adapter aerial plug plug that in click and plug that into the head unit Ta -da! The very last thing to plug in is the hazard light switch there we go it's in position guys okay, so before I screw it in and all of that stuff Let's uh, turn the key on and check it all works and everything. On here, set up, yes, okay. Timers. Okay, source, radio. I wonder if RDU is back up. No, RDU is down at the moment. Let's go. Yay! And we've got AM. Always check that you've got AM to make sure you get full reception. Good station in New Zealand to use is 612, it's very weak. Yes, it's kind of, yeah. Okay, so that's not there. Let's try 1593. Yep, 1593 is there. Cool, so we're all good, I can screw this back in. As it like works, let's check the heater all works still. That works, that works. Fan works, AC works, mode works, 
there, there. Dimmer. Everything works. Okay, that's all screwed in. Put these things back on. One, and I need to move you guys. Click, click. Close that. Pop this back down. Done. So now, all I need to do is bolt the seat back down and we'll be done. So that's it guys, job done. I uh, hope you guys like the way it looks. It's uh, obviously a wee bit of a, like you can't say it's not a botched job, but I think it turned out quite well. Like it looks quite neat. You can see the edges of the, where the Macintosh stereo was. It's just a wee bit wider than regular DIN. But yeah, no, everything's good and working. Just so, as a reference, before, there's the one he's gotten out and after and as if you haven't already figured it out this unit here is the exact same as the one that like you know that I botched out of here so it's the exact same thing and the cool thing about these Pioneer units as well is if you did have uh, steering wheel controls for your for like your volume or your seeking or anything like that you could have I could have wired them up for you with the Pioneer units for quite cheap um, these buttons on this steering wheel here are just Tiptronic because it's an older car but still doable with the later models. So yeah, that's how it looks. So yeah, hopefully you guys found this video either enjoyable or you learned something from it. Now you know how to wire up the stereo in York uh, Legacy or Outback or whatever it is you have. If you're trying to bypass an amplifier, hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching this video guys if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up or if you found it useful give it a thumbs up um, because when you do that you know youtube will promote it to more new viewers i'll get more people to see the channel and the channel can grow and i love you know meeting and talking to new people over youtube i love like the you know the, the back and forth conversation between uh, myself someone like i consider myself a professional obviously i am paid to do it that makes me a professional and people who are learning to do it themselves and i love helping people out so that they can get the best thing obviously i do this job because i enjoy it it's a passion of mine and i want everyone to have the best sound system in the car they could possibly have so i'm always happy to help if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you enjoy my channel in general consider hitting the subscribe button make sure you've a lot of people um, come back every day for channels and watch their videos but they don't realize until later on that they're actually not subscribed so just make sure below this video that you have checked the subscribe button and if you want to get on the go notifications for when i upload like straight to your phone or your email or whatever it is click the little bell because then it will notify you as soon as i upload and if you want to help support my channel even further there'll be a link uh, on the screen here and in the description for my Patreon page where you can, you know, it's a crowdfunding website, you can help me out, get, um, you know, help get me some new tools and some better gear to showcase. And the main thing I'll be using the funds from that page for is buying a new camera because as you may have noticed in this video, just a couple times this, this GoPro isn't quite right for the shot I'm trying to get. For instance, if I want to show something in detail, I have to have the camera way up close, which is literally like almost touching it which isn't always ideal if I'm trying to show you something that I'm working on. So I do need a new camera and it will have better audio and a better focus, autofocus and everything like that. I always end up rambling at the end of my videos because I'm trying to think of everything I want to say to you guys. But I think I've said everything. So thanks so much for watching this video. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in my next one.